It's finally time, my dudes, to review the Oculus Quest 2 and a complete buyer's guide to it after hours and hours and so many hours of using it at the detriment to myself because apparently, don't ignore a pregnant wife. Just seems to be common sense that I don't have, but I have a lot to say about this. Here's a quick TLDR, just because you're here, and I love you. The Oculus Quest 2 is hands down the best bang for your buck in VR. However, while amazing, it's also a headset full of compromises that you should be aware of that even if you already have your Oculus Quest 2, there are probably some things you want to tweak for a better experience. If you have newly adopted VR, or are actively interested in getting into VR, I really couldn't be more jealous because there's never been a better time with the Oculus Quest 2 to get into virtual reality. And where they did a great job with the Oculus Quest originally, this successor is arguably better in most ways from how light it is to the smaller size. It is overall more comfortable. The upgraded Snapdragon processor is very much welcomed. And of course, all that at the low entry price of $299. Early adopters, we paid the premium and I'm so happy to see VR so accessible now but of course, this low price comes with concessions on more than a few fronts. Yeah, that does it. That's the review. No more. We're done. Now this review, it's going to be broken down into a ton of segments. You can scan the chapter sliders, but I think there is something for everyone in each segment here. This of course starts with comfort. Are you going to have to build a tree trunk like neck for extended use like the original Oculus Quest? Or will these extended sessions be more comfortable? Without a doubt, straight out the box, the Oculus Quest 2 is more comfortable highly due to the overall lighter weight. I really cannot express how much lighter it feels in my hands. However, I do have an issue with the stock strap and think this is the first compromise I noticed immediately. That first concession that I was talking about is the stock strap. Now, while it will work, I think it is a borderline need to improve upon the comfortability of the headset by replacing this with a few different options. Yes, you can fiddle with this bad boy, but I even had to tuck my ears underneath it. I find it to be very much lacking, but that's how they kept this thing so low, so I understand it. However, the Elite strap, either the normal version or the version that has the battery pack attached to it, I have used both and have greatly enjoyed them. They have improved my play sessions dramatically. However, I cannot ignore the fact that there are a lot of reports on the Elite straps cracking due to use. Myself, I have sat on mine at some point and it's fine, but that's just my personal experience please research that, that may be a production issue. In addition though, if you would like to use your deluxe audio strap, like on the original Oculus Quest, the mods are already out there right now for the Oculus Quest 2. I will link the ones that I've used in the video description, but Ben over at Business Company VR hit me up with these and they worked flawlessly to attach my deluxe audio strap to my Oculus Quest 2. There's also another comfort issue though that for some reason I don't see anyone mentioning it, but I think it's another large compromise that borderline meets the definition of needing an accessory to fix it. Obviously, I might be a little dramatizing this, but the stock facial insert for the Oculus Quest 2, I am not personally a big fan of. I found it uncomfortable after a few hours of play and it was chafing my actual beard. It felt pretty bad. Thankfully, my good friends over at VR Cover sent me their facial interface and foam replacements in which they click right into place and not only immediately fixed how uncomfortable the stock play was, but also helped decrease any light bleed that I had. These were provided to me by VR Cover to put that out there, but to me, it is a necessary mod that should be factored into the cost of the headset. But overall though, it is safe to say that the comfort on the Oculus Quest 2 does far exceed that of the Oculus Quest 1, even without mods. But what about the visuals? Arguably what we are going to notice the most, if not up to par, and similar to the comfort on the Oculus Quest 2, this again is an overall improvement from its predecessor at again, a cost of a few things. The resolution for the Oculus Quest 2 is pretty high for a VR headset, rocking 1832 by 1920 per eye, which is not only a large improvement over the original Quest, but it's actually higher than the Valve Index. We could spend a lot of time speaking on the actual resolution, but my mind was made up pretty quick on this from the start. Comparing to another LCD screen, my Valve Index, the visual fidelity of the Oculus Quest 2 was a slight upgrade actually from the Valve Index, and the screen door effect is also borderline non-existent, although the field of view compared to my index, it does leave a lot to be desired and more on that to come. And bringing up that LCD screen, here is again where you will find another compromise. Where the original Oculus Quest has dual screens, the Oculus Quest 2 is one LCD screen, which for IPD has some people scratching their heads. Many of us are familiar with an actual slider to adjust the IPD settings, 
across a wide spectrum, but due to the LCD screen being a single screen, there's instead three presets representing 58 millimeters, 63 millimeters, and 68 millimeters. If you're a Cyclops like myself, you'll find the settings more than adequate. However, if you're more Sid the Sloth, you'll actually notice a slight decrease in field of view, especially at the edges, and yeah, that is not ideal for large IPD users. However, you can actually slide the lenses between presets, something not everyone knows, giving you a wider range of options if one of the presets still leads to a blurry view. For the mass majority of users, you will find that you'll be able to use the Oculus Quest 2 just fine, but there are going to be some who never find that sweet spot or just won't want to use this headset. Of course, this resolution has to translate to graphics, and between the pixel density and the upgraded Snapdragon XR2 processor, in-game graphics are going to be a large upgrade from the Oculus Quest 1, which much clearer and crisp graphics. Even some games out now, or more coming soon, will be having updates to boost in-game graphics even more for that Oculus Quest 2 hardware. We are talking very little foveated rendering, better lighting, much better textures, and a lot more. Is it PC VR? Hell no, but for a mobile headset, it's pretty much set on a pedestal alone. In my play, frame drops and laggy anything seem non-existent, and I could tell the headset wasn't trying to keep up with the game, which is something I have felt happening quite often on the original Oculus Quest. To wrap this section up, we do have to talk about the colors of the LCD screen, because I think this is going to be the biggest shock factor to many. Being an LCD screen, there will be no true blacks, and god rays can truly be a problem, and if you've ever only used an Oculus Quest, the original one, this is going to be a big difference and it's going to have some shock value at the start, the difference between an LCD to an OLED panel. There is nothing that can be done about this, it was obviously a compromise for cost as well as a little bit of resolution. At the end of the day, I'd recommend to play and play and just use it a lot more and over time these differences between OLED and LCD should start to normalize. I know a lot of us use the index had this kind of thought at the beginning but it's just the norm now for it there's nothing we can do but overall visuals and the resolution are an overall improvement from the oculus quest one i think we all knew that moving on to the tracking i was very curious to see if there were any noticeable differences as the camera locations on the oculus quest 2 they do differ slightly from the oculus quest one seemingly to cover a larger area tracking is a pretty hard one to measure sometimes I am not a pro VR rhythm game player or pro VR game player in anything, but at no point was my performance hurt by any tracking issues, if anything just my poor skill. However, using virtual desktop with the original Oculus Quest, my Pavlov play was anything but optimal. However, I found it a market improvement playing Pavlov through virtual desktop on the Oculus Quest 2, and while it never did rival the accuracy I had with base stations, I just don't think it's going to be much of a problem for anyone using the Oculus Quest 2 tracking. It's pretty on points. Actually reversing that thought, if you are a hardcore competitive player of any game that does require quite a bit of movement or near flawless tracking or any combination of them, I can't say how this will perform for you as there aren't any games that I'm personally good enough at that would tax the Oculus Quest 2 tracking, but keep that in mind if you're a competitive player. The controllers though are a bit of a mixed bag, but the sum of the parts will either be great for some or just adequate for many. Comparing them to the original Oculus Quest controllers, they are significantly larger, and not just in your palm, but everything about it just seems proportionally off to me at least. In fact, I'm having flashbacks to the Vive 1s, as it feels very similar to the weight and pressure needed for the side buttons, really when comparing it to the original Oculus Quest controllers. But there are also three things here that are large improvements. That starts with the controller batteries. I am absolutely not sure what's going on here. If there are maybe a tiny army of goblins in the controllers keeping them powered, but the longevity of the controllers is quite frankly very impressive. I have yet to change my batteries in either of my controllers yet, and I still have quite a bit left to go, which is absolutely a huge improvement over the battery life of the original Oculus Quest controllers where sometimes I would just come back after night to them being dead. Also the battery spring issue that plagued Beat Saber players on the original Oculus Quest, it seems to have been fixed here, it's not going anywhere now. And lastly, the vibration and haptic responses of the controllers have been improved, and while not something you'll notice right away, it is definitely an improvement. The Oculus Quest 2 controllers are for sure better in most ways, but to me, it just doesn't feel as comfortable as the previous versions, but like with everything else, the more I play with them, the quicker that I will adjust. 
Now when it comes to audio, I have always expected my audio from say a PC VR headset, it needs to be amazing. It's one of the many reasons that I do love my Valve Index. However, when talking about the Oculus Quest or the Oculus Quest 2 and its audio, I personally, I've just always been more forgiving, but I can explain. The original Oculus Quest with its onboard audio is pretty much exactly the same as the onboard audio on the Oculus Quest 2, and both, well, they're just really not any good, but that doesn't equate to not preferred. Look, the Oculus Quest 2 audio lacks any bass, it lacks any presence it could have, and with audio being a super large part of the VR experience next to visuals, I can't say the onboard audio is really that great at all, it's really not. But remember, this is a headset of compromises, and this compromise to not include a different type of audio solution, it makes a lot of sense. Audio solutions like the Valve Index are very, very expensive, and I think it's safe to say true audiophiles, people who are super sensitive to great sound, well, that's just not the majority of people, and for the vast majority of people, the onboard audio will be good enough, not to mention the prevalence of how many people already have a preferred headphone that they're using, I think most people will be fine with the onboard audio or already have a solution at home. In the meantime, that deluxe audio strap is still absolute king. I don't personally have a lot to say about the battery other than this. If you planned on having extended play sessions without the use of any auxiliary form of power, well, that's just not gonna happen with the Oculus Quest 2. In fact, over the course of six full charges to complete drains to get a sample for battery life, I clocked in about two hours and five minutes on average before the battery on the headset ran out. This is just not a lot of time. And with VR gaming getting better and better, two hours can fly by, leaving a ton to be desired. If you want full immersion, you're gonna either need something like an anchor battery pack or invest in the Elite strap with the extra battery. With the Elite battery strap, I never had a play session that had to be stopped due to battery concerns and would guess it's good for about four to six hours of general use. But that brings us to, of course, the biggest concession of the entire Oculus Quest 2, the need to have a Facebook account for the use of it. And while I have touched on this in other videos, this video, we are not going to be talking about if it's right, if it's wrong, what the problems are with it, or what could happen. Just really the facts of what choices you actually have, because I'm done talking about that, and that's what apparently the VR Reddit is for now as well. We know that all new headset purchases will require a Facebook account to be used. Anything you do or say in any Oculus environment or Facebook setting can be used against you, and Facebook does reserve the right to ban your account at any time at the cost of your Oculus purchases as well. We also know that if you choose to voluntarily delete your Facebook account for one reason or another, you will lose all your Oculus content as well as they are tied together. I know many people do not like Facebook and this compromise may be too much, which is completely fair. However, at this point, you have two options. You technically have a third and we'll get into that, but I'm leaving it off the list. Two options. Number one, use your real name, make a real Facebook account and buy an Oculus Quest 2. It cannot be any more simple than that. If you want to use an Oculus Quest 2, you need to make a real Facebook account and be okay entering that ecosystem. Option number two, don't buy an Oculus Quest 2. I know that seems common sense, but that is your options, one or two. Make an account, a real account, or don't get an Oculus Quest 2. That's really all your options are, and I'm done talking about all the other problems with this. Technically, option three would be to make a fake Facebook account, and for every anecdotal story of someone who has a fake Facebook account and says it's been there forever, please take it with a grain of salt. If you make a fake Facebook account, the chances are more likely than not that they will catch you, you will lose your Oculus content and the ability to use your Oculus Quest 2 headset. So please do not make a fake Facebook account. Either choose to make one and use your Oculus Quest 2 or choose not to enter the ecosystem and go play something else. It's that simple. Well, let's go ahead and put a bow on this video because we've talked about it enough. Here are my final thoughts. Just gonna rattle them off. The Oculus Quest 2 is hands down the best bang for your buck in VR. Priced at $299, it's really not comparable to anything else and stands alone. Of course, the headset's priced at $299 because it is 
a headset full of compromises, but it was priced that way, knowing you will very much likely need some type of comfort solution, whether that's a different strap or the VR cover. They also know that you're gonna need a new audio solution. These are all compromises, but the price reflects those, which makes them a little bit more tolerable. Of course, the biggest compromise of it all is if you are okay entering the Facebook ecosystem, but that is for you to decide, decide it alone, whether you want to use Facebook or don't, can we just all agree, don't heckle other people for their choice to use the Oculus Quest 2. But at the end of the day, I said at the beginning of the video, and I will say it again now, when I joined and got into VR at the start, if I started where newcomers were starting right now with the Oculus Quest 2, it would have been an amazing experience, even more than I already had. There has never, ever been a better time to get into VR at the most economical price point at a very high functioning headset it is a great time to get into vr i'm excited to keep seeing more and more vr users more and more vr content creators as well and speaking with game devs seeing their games keep getting more and more users it is fantastic it is fun and i just couldn't be more excited but that is going to be the review of the oculus quest 2 if you enjoyed these longer form videos please let me know because they're a lot of fun to make and I like to be a little more creative, so they're fun. Please let me know. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe and hit that bell icon. That way you never miss an upload. And as always, see you next time, Space Cowboys. <sighs> Bang.